today we have a very special treat for you guys. This is oh, you disappeared. Bugatti Seven. Do you know who Bugatti Seven is? I hate this intro. We're gonna stop it right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So today we're going to have a look at one of our members, longtime members, bases, and a big community project, and he's going to make my brain hurt as we go through all of it. So let's begin. This is Bugatti7. Hello, good afternoon, and you join me in I'm Burrito in this lovely thunderstorm, which is actually quite fitting for the mad science I'm about to throw on you. I'm okay, so yeah, that's that happened. So let's head down. I'm scared. <laughs> you should be. Okay. <laughs> uh, come into my evil lair. Don't be shy. It's nice and warm down here. Oh, good. Well, actually, before I take you into my evil lair, we'll just head down to uh, the slime farm. Mm -hmm. uh, me and uh, one of the other guys on the server, Gasmo, decided to set this up for reasons I will explain shortly. So. There you go, slime farm. It's lovely, isn't it? It is a slime farm. It is a slime farm. Let's move on. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really much to say, is it? My house is on top of a slime chunk, so I think it's the next logical step to build a farm. So, me and Gazmo are working on the arena, which we'll be going to in a bit. But first, um, I've just got this potion set up here. So, yeah, I've just got seven machines, one for each of the potions that we'll be using there. And this setup just allows me to mass produce seven lots of potions at once. And I've got a hopper line just at the top here feeding into the water chest just so I can fill them up from a point over here. I should have really gone this way first uh. rather than going down the corridor. But there you go. I do tend to wander. So, yeah, I've got more water bottles and you can shake a stick out. And then I've got a hopper, which is actually currently... For the moment. So yeah, you just throw, don't keep hitting my chest, damn you. Shaking a stick at it. Oh, yeah, fair enough. But oh, Alright, moving on. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to pick up these sticks, you're vandalizing my property again. <laughs> right, okay, so on the left here, we just have a Never Walk Farm. It's, uh, it's not great, nothing fancy, but, you know, it does what I need it to. So, yeah, just a bit further down here, but sort of I'm just... Uh, yeah, this is my proudest invention ever. This single mushroom in the middle of a of a blank room. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So yeah, I just I just grow mushrooms in here. Anyway, moving on. So prepare for your eyes to be offended. Ow. <laughs> yeah, this is my storm. I built it just a little bit earlier today. Because they I had about seven double chests upstairs, it was silly. So I've got building blocks, uh drops and then I've just got a small section over here for my potion ingredients and spare water bottles if I should happen to D don't, don't do that <laughs> what the what are you doing you crazy crazy man uh, just some furnaces on the back wall here and a place to hang my hat there you go did you know these lanterns had animations uh yeah I didn't actually notice until recently but yeah what have I been doing I don't know. <laughs> well, you don't really notice them unless you actually stop to stir them. I think if you're moving, you don't, you won't really notice them, I suppose. Clearly, I've I've used them. <laughs> I haven't noticed it. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, a bit offensive to the eyes, but I think the room itself is quite functional. I think it reminds me of like a fun house. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose as the mad scientist, it's probably quite fitting that I should have something resembling a madhouse. Yes. All right. Yes. And okay, moving on, moving <laughs> ever swiftly on away from this wretched place. Okay. Yes. So let's just uh, head up back the ladder here. I mean, probably noticed in the background at the start that I have got a house, or at least the start of a house not really spend that much time on it gotta be honest M spend most of it down there just kind of getting that potion set up ready 
And if you're wondering why the hacker needs so many potions, that will probably become abundantly clear with what I'm going to show you next. I want to talk about your house more. Okay, let's talk about my house for a moment. <laughs> well, you wanted to have this conversation. <laughs> I like it. It's It's got a yeah, modern it's... feel to it, and that's not something I've seen you do before. So... You don't really see me do any building before, so I think most things is an improvement so you have been on my servers for over two years yes this is the first house i have seen you build yes just want this that on the record <laughs> <laughs> oh well i tend to tinker elsewhere usually helping out of redstone and other people's bases so yeah i am something of a, a minecraft vagabond shall we say Can never kind my word can I, can I use that Okay, word? okay, go ahead. You, sir, are a redstone nomad. Came okay, up with now, that all by myself. That is not fair. We used that in a previous take. We <laughs> may or may not have recorded this may or may... already. Yeah, actually... And lost it. Or the entire thing. Anyway, let's move on to the arena. Yes, quick jump cut, and then we will show you something big and scary that makes my head melt. Look at how big your head is. I think yeah. it's actually quite appropriate. <laughs> he does have a pretty big head. <laughs> I think it's because you're wearing that head on top of it. Is it the Probably. same size? Yeah, that looks to be about the same. Does it? I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's about the same. But when you put your <laughs> overhead on, it's like you're wearing <laughs> a paper mache hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are now at the arena. We're going to get a. Oh well, we, are we going were to going get a tour to. Tour from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh wait, no, 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 he's back. He's back. Okay, uh, so this is a community <laughs> project that these two guys primarily have been working on. Dory and I have had very minimal aesthetic input. Um, but, um, let's uh, let's start up in uh, the arena. Yeah, you I'll. The <laughs> I just yeah, um, the carpet. In fact, guys, I'll let you kind of explain what you've been doing up top because you've been doing some work here recently. Have I? Well, you were doing work <laughs> when we got here, so that's close enough. Yeah, getting it done. Uh, hey, hey, I'll explain my bits in a minute. Have you actually told them what the arena's for? Um, well, <laughs> basically, yeah, I think to be honest, that doesn't warrant an explanation. It's basically just going to be, uh, for, like, teams of four to come in and just fight wave after wave of mobs. Yes. That's the basic idea. Think horde mode from Gears of War. Yeah, basically the, what we're going for. And that's what we're trying to do, but all in survival. Yeah. So, what are these big things up in the sky? That's our mob farms. Super mob farms. Super mob farms. Super mob farms. Eventually. So almost super mob farms. We should get crazy rates in there that will all fill into these tunnels that you see in the four opposite ends. Mm -hmm. And then they shall be released on the prey. I was going to say unsuspecting fools, but that works too. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> this is new. They're yes. basically, we're going to give them all, we're going to give them some random drops as well, so some will have armor. We're going to give them random potion effects, so they'll be <laughs> invisible ones, strong ones, fast ones. Yeah, that was, and that was basically the idea of the setup I had back at my base. Yeah. Is this like yeah. the... Spawn? Yeah, this um, was designed by. I think this is by... going to be the spawn room. Yeah. Okay. I think this. I think Doom did this, didn't he? Yeah, Doombringer was working on that. That explains but, it. But he keeps running out of stock on his shop, so he keeps disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're also going to have a roof on here, so you won't see these um, mob farms. But the roof's going to have a load of hazards that drop down. Yeah. So, so I think we. Got anvils, prime TNT, water, lava, random potions. Am I missing any? Random potions, yep. All dropping from random places in the ceiling. So you, people will never be able to tell where they're coming from because it'll always be different. So they can't just hide in one area and think they're going to be safe. I like my odds. 
<laughs> oh, this, this isn't meant to be beaten, really. We want to have <laughs> ten rounds, and the idea is that in order to complete it, all four players are going to have to work really well together. Uh, it's, it's, got, it's, it's going to be an achievement if they actually survive the ten rounds. And also, we're going to have like an, like an upgrade station as well, in which players can buy upgrades from. We haven't really decided at this stage what they're going to be exactly. No, there'll be blocks and things so they can make little barricades. Yeah, yeah. There'll be like uh, maybe some health stuff and things like that as well. They'll also be able to buy maybe snow golems to use as decoys. Things like that. Yeah. Try to make it possible. Yeah. It's going to be possible, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. So... We want people to cheer when they do it. They're going to go, oh my god, I actually done it. <laughs> It sounds like a very ambitious project. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, I think we've done very well. I mean, how many weeks are we into the project, would you say, at this stage, about three? So, well, I think it's only two. Oh, yeah, so we've done really so, done really well with it. I mean, sort of like the structure that you see here, I mean, we probably did like the majority of like the touch-ups in about a day or so. I mean, this was all Neverack to begin with. Mm. But, I mean, it went from being that to this quite quickly yes. once we actually committed some time to it. We got lucky because we have somebody on the server who sells Obsidian. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we did get quite lucky there. So we bought it and made him rich. <laughs> well, that's fair, I suppose. And also made ourselves poor in the process. Yeah. Anyway, um, do not touch the buttons, Brito. Okay. No touch. Okay. Right, I'll, but I will show you what the buttons are for. So if you just follow me down here mm -hmm. to the very, very bottom level of the arena, which I will descend safely to set a good example. <laughs> I totally don't try to jump that water source over there and miss terribly. I don't think it's actually possible from here. Anyway, I believe this your death is. Count would contradict that. Yes, it would somewhat. Anyway, so this absolute monstrosity is basically 10 or so pulse extenders all kind of stuck together. So the idea being is that you put um, the amount, like, well, items in the left hopper here. Mm -hmm. And from when it goes into this right hopper, it will basically force all the items into this and this will turn on, which will go the signal carry to here, which will open the doors. And when this is up, in this case it's five items, when they all go to the other one, it will keep as long as long as it takes for the five items to go into there and then go back into here. And that determines the length of the rounds. Yep. And in between that, like I said, it opens the doors, but also activates a timer which will release splash potions into each of the four tunnels roughly every 15 seconds or so. And we also have a facility to toggle on a separate circuit, the uh, water on and off. So we have the water on when we actually want the arena to be functional to carry the mobs down. But when they're off, we basically use the four super mob farms as well. Mob farms. Yeah. Which I we started work on, I believe you've actually finished it. Yep, all while four are working. Well, I've been out gallivanting, you have finished... Yep, it's looking yeah. very nice indeed. But to roughly translate bad there, the whole thing <laughs> is going to be automated. Yes. So in theory, people can come in, press a button and start, and not have to worry about a controller. So each Basically. round will be set probably to a different time, so each round will probably be a bit longer. Yes. And then in between the rounds is when they can go and do their upgrades, is when the doors are closed. And, well, just speaking of, like, the upgrade stations a little bit earlier, if you were to follow me down all the way down, in, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. to the very bottom of the farm. This used to be one continuous ladder, but thanks to my meddling, it's now four connections. Oh, there you go, Gazmo taking the quick way down there. Actually, did you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God dang it. I went off the high dive. <laughs> Oh, God, you're much more adventurous than I am. Anyway, so... Find your water. Don't be scared. This... Well, to be fair, the amount of times I've fallen, I suppose, <laughs> by now, I've, I've got a slight aversion to water. Given all the times I've fallen off this arena. So, anyway, just to kind of demonstrate <coughs> this really quickly, I'll just go and get some redstone and I put it in this chest for you. Blocks. Yeah, just... Okay, um, I have the redstone. Okay, now put it in the machine. Yes, chef. Dum, dum, 
<laughs> right, so if you just keep your menu open, you can just see that filtered them away, and there you go. You get your items in exchange. Yay! So basically, I've put ladders and signs here just to kind of show you what's going on. Mm -hmm. So if you were to just head around the back, uh, these two droppers dispense the items that you're selling to to the person buying the items. Yeah, that's how to kill it. Okay, and down here you have a multi pulser. So if you have no items in this dropper, it will just dispense one item through both those hoppers. Pardon me, droppers. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so you just do that minus one. So if you wanted to sell five, you just put four in there. So, oh gosh darn it, I fell off the side. Give me a minute to get back up. <laughs> Don't worry, I got the rest of this. So, these Go on. hoppers here, um, the number of items that need to be subtracted oh, to reset <laughs> the filter, which obviously means, oh, you've fallen off again. <laughs> no, I did not fall off that time. I had help. And this hopper here is the amount you need to oh, pay, <laughs> which, Gasmo, be nice. It's not me. <laughs> there you go. Get down there, Gasmo. I am sorry, I had to, I had to defend myself. All right, Gasmo, let me ask you this. Do you uh, understand all of this? No. Any of this? No, it's not okay. my job to understand it. <laughs> Just making sure. What? My job is to tell him what I need from Redstone, and Bug does it. He finds a way. <laughs> it was very impressive, nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah, I really like this design. I sort of just kind of did this myself, and got really pleased I got into free wide space as well. Um, this, however, is much simpler. It's just a single output randomizer. Which is what I'll likely be using for the for the hazards, just you know, to select which one's going to be occurring that round. Mm -hmm. So all this is it just uses the the dropper mechanic where it will dispense a random item when you press a button, and you've just got four item filters here, all set to the point where if another item of that type will go in, it will just uh, increase the comparator output by one and just pulse the corresponding repeater. The comparator, man. Comparator, what? What, whatever, whatever. <laughs> potato. <laughs> potato, potato, as we said the other day. Potato. But yeah, that potato. Oh, d don't you go off with that. <laughs> that with that patronizing British accent of yours again. <laughs> I, s I saw that abomination. That was your last intro. Don't hate. <laughs> ah, it's okay. It was rather funny. So I'll Actually, me. your redneck impression. I feel yes, it's okay, far more okay, offensive. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I was hoping you wouldn't bring that up, so I'm just going to <laughs> quietly let that point go. So we've been getting, well, you and Dory and Doom have been lending a hand as well. So let me show you my contribution. Helps. So far. <laughs> this is what I helped decide. Yeah. Dory and I teamed up to decide to put light blue carpet on this <laughs> layer here. Yep, and it took an hour. <laughs> it did. <laughs> hey, deciding the palette's an important thing. Yeah. I think I'm not it just saying that. looks marvelous. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, and we've got all four of our mob farms going. And In case yeah. people are wondering, it's obsidian because we're going to get creepers. We don't want everything getting blown up. Exactly. <laughs> you have a visitor. Oh, do I now? Yes. Where? Oh. Oh, big man. Oh, what's he doing here? Going for a swim. <laughs> <laughs> Splash. Oh, well, they'll be fine. Swim with the fishies. <laughs> that was another thing we were contemplating, possibly putting giant gold farms above each of the mob farms so we get pigmen involved as well. You know what? Just speaking of gold farms, would you like to see our gold farm? Yes. Or, mm. yes. yes. Well, you may as well. I mean, you've <laughs> seen pretty much everything else at this stage, so... Mm, you're eating pumpkin pie. Dory's homemade pumpkin pie. Nah, I prefer my freshly caught fish. Now available at the 
what did I call it? Oh, Dorito, here we go. Dorito, here we go. Gourmet Coffee Company. Now oh. available at... Shameful on... plugging. Absolutely it's... shameful. <laughs> oh. Uh, we, we did tell Dory that we made a small chain or a small version of that in the uh, arena for people. Yeah, we yeah, can put so, a little kiosk in there. I mean, I don't know if the rates are great at the moment, but you can basically see what's going it's on here. Yeah. not bad what's, for what's going on. Do you have hoppers so, underneath or do you collect it? Well, I'll actually show you the collection system. <gasps> Would you? Don't. <laughs> You know, I couldn't decide whether that was enthusiasm or abject terror. Combo. <laughs> right, I actually need to put my banner mm. here as well. I'll do that in a bit. So, yeah. So, Watch I, your step now. I think with okay. hindsight, this was a little bit more complicated than needed to be because we were just doing a single post. So, what we've got here is Hopper Minecarts. So, every, I don't know, maybe 40 seconds or so, they just got a Hopper. Clock the sending a pulse to these rails. Uh, sends hey, get out of my face. Okay, I'll get out of your face. So that will send a pulse to all those upper minecarts. They'll kind of collect all the drops. Then they'll stop on the unpowered powered rails. And they will just collect all the items. And then they will go down here into this filter. And as you can see as well, we also have it as a gas farm. Yes. Well... Not at first, we had to raise the ceiling. Yeah, we had to raise it a little <laughs> bit. Now, Gazmo, that was your mistake for once, not mine. It wasn't my mistake, they've changed uh, that. Uh, uh, okay. Do the golems attack the gas? Yeah, it just uh, takes them a little while. Yeah, they are nice. a little yeah. bit slow. But anyway, once they do finally attack, you can actually see that we do have about 10 gas tiers in here, so... Yeah, evidence it, that... Well, that's including, what, the 18 or whatever that's in the hopper? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, of course. Okay, so we're back at spawn. Uh, I figured I should, you know, do something in one of my videos at some point. So we're here in the uh, the meeting hall area, which uh, I've needed to put grass down for probably close to two weeks, but just now getting around to it. But I kind of thought it would be a good opportunity to do something else that I've been neglecting to do uh, for a while but I need to get this gravel uh, for us to do it so um, how much do I have now? I got over a stack that should be enough to at least get something done because I feel actually I don't feel like anything I know all I've done uh, so far in this series is just walk so we're gonna get ooh, Iron. You 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 done? Alright, let's get this iron real quick. Thanks. Okay. So there's Gasmo in his eighties mesh outfit. I'm out of food too. Man, I'm not on the ball today. Okay. Hey Meg. Hi, Meg. He's probably not there. Um, let me let's check death games real quick. Uh oh. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, that was close. Okay. Um, food. We need food. Nah, bro. <laughs> um. Uh, what was I doing? Food. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. This. I. Why are we stopping here? I was going to get food. Uh, I did want to show this off. This is uh, something Matt. Matty B is working on. He's a new member. He's been with us uh, about a week. Um, he's building a bouncy castle. It's pretty. What he's actually doing is uh, is making like a miniature parkour course that'll have a prize at the end if you beat it. Hi. Hee hee hee. Okay, so what we are going to do is continue our paths uh, that we have like 
uh, going throughout spawn. We're starting to get some more buildings pop out uh, outside of where we have paths so far. So I think it would probably be a good idea to start running paths out to those things. So that's what we're going to do right now. Um, more of an example as actually doing the work because I'll probably run out of gravel pretty quickly but what I do when I do these type of paths is kind of just take my shovel and go like this kind of get a random shape something along here so something like that where it's not it's not perfectly straight it's well actually something like that and we have a little bit more grass to work with on this side so we'll probably bring it out a little bit further on that side so what we have here is a shape that's going to curve a little bit to the right and then come out a little bit more to the left before it comes around this bank that this is on right here. Um, and someone else did this part. That's why there's three cobblestone touching each other. But if we look back at a section that I did, um, and I'll show you in the method that I put it down, but I don't like to have any of one block type. I didn't do that. Touching, and you really get a random feel. And you know, sometimes I'll throw an andesite. Um, in the meeting hall, I did coarse dirt where these locations like that dirt block would be, and I think it goes better than the grass. Well, now that I look at it, I, I like the grass, it just, like this is a bad example when there's four blocks of it right beside each other. When it's like this and you just have a block every once in a while, I think it looks really nice. But let's fix this right here. You don't want it to be too much, too much grass. I like that it looks old and broken and stuff like that, but gotta even it out. So what I do is I I have three stages. I take my gravel and then my cobble and then my stone bricks. So we start with the gravel, go in, place them semi-randomly. You also don't want to um, do something like this where you have, oops, please don't be flint, thank you. Uh, you have like a straight line of gravel, which is hard to do. Well, it's easy to do when you're not um, goodness, when you're trying not to put two blocks of the same right beside each other because you'll you'll end up doing this and then you might accident well not accidentally but put one right there so you have to forcibly randomize it like I could put one right there but I chose to put one right here so that's going to give us room for these other types of blocks um, so we'll just throw more of these down like this just randomly whoop see what I did I ruined everything I broke the world um, and I'll throw something in like that I also like to uh, keep the f well this is I'm just contradicting myself left and right I was gonna say I like to put the gravel on like the inner part of the path and save um, stuff like cobble and stone bricks for the outside but I have failed to do that so far, so what am, what happened? Why do I have 64 flint in my inventory? All this crap. Bleh. Alright, so then we go with our cobble. Oops. Um, and just kind of do the same thing, but also try and fill it in as much as you can. Because after this, we've only got one more block type left, and uh, that will kind of determine the shape of the path as far as the outer edges are concerned. Hi, Maddy. Run like the wind. Uh, so we'll just do this. Mm. I don't know. Eh? Where else can we put one? Put one here can't do that. What else we got? Mm, oh, this is a big open spot. But I can't put cobble in any of those. We'll throw another gravel down in there. Like right 
there, the only place I can put one. Uh, okay, so we have that. Now we're going to take our stone bricks and just fill in everything else we've dug out that isn't touching the same block. So, let's see. I don't have any example opportunities up here. Whatever. <laughs> um, okay, so we have the basic shape of our path now. Um, and then we have, let's see, we'll use andesite here. Actually, dirt and andesite. So we have these, the leftover spaces. Um, if it's more towards the inside, I'll put uh, a stone colored block like that. If it's more towards the outside, I'll usually put uh, dirt so grass will grow in, like uh, like grass is actually growing in from the outside of the path. Um, I'll need to bulk that up a little bit there. Um, just something like that. Uh, need to do something here. And here's an opportunity to shape the path a little bit more. Um, so we'll Let's see, how far out do we want to go? Let's go crazy, crazy! Voice cracked. Probably should have taken this wool out too. Um, something like that. And maybe even, let's do this part first. Do this part first is what I said. Good job, me. Um, so we'll do Something like that. There's my cobble. So blah blah blah. Does that? Oh, look what I did. I did it bad. I done bad. Another cobble here, and here, and here, and go crazy here. So the rest of that, we're going to bring this dirt shoulder out a little bit. Um, so it, oops, <laughs> so it looks natural. Um, and then we'll just we'll fill this all in with dirt. Do I have anything with silk touch on it? Of course not. Um, but as I was gonna say, we could probably shape it a little bit more on this side. Um, give me some dirt. Am I out of dirt? Poop. Dirt. Up here. Yeah. How many more pieces do we need for this? Three. Um, I'll take it off here. Uh, and you. And then just throw this down here. And so I think that path has a nice shape to it. It starts kind of like right here. It kind of weaves out a little bit. Uh, oh, not what I pressed. I guess it is what I pressed, but not what I wanted to press. Um, so then, so we've got the shape of our path. Uh, ideally, we'd like to wait for the grass to grow in on the sides like that. But um, obviously, what you can see I've done with all these paths so far is kind of bone meal right on the side, and that helps define the shape of the path a little bit more. Um, I made again. Just need a couple bones. Boot up, boop, but up, bump, bump. You may have these. You're welcome. Um. So yeah, we'll just go bone meal that. It's now's not the best time to do it because the grass hasn't grown in on this new dirt area. But hopefully you'll get the idea. Um. Nom 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 nom. All right, a plop. So, right now you can, I mean, you can kind of see that the path does a little bit of an S. But if we take the bone meal and we put it on the edges here, I feel like you get it. You get more of that curved feeling when you have more than one thing that defines that border. So you can see there's road behind this piece of grass here so you know that the road takes more of a curve there um, 
So just little things like that. That's what I try and focus on in this game is the little details like that. And that's and that's gonna bother me until it's done, but that should be grown up. <laughs> By next episode, hopefully. Um and you can do stuff like uh coarse dirt like I was saying. Um I think the not necessarily in this texture pack, but in vanilla the these cracked stone bricks and the cobblestone look very good together. Let's just let's try that real quick. Actually is anything gonna eat me? No? Okay. Resource packs. Um where oh <laughs> That's how vanilla works. Uh, so here, like, look, these, these, I think these two textures are very similar, and that this path probably looks better in vanilla, in my opinion. But I've just gotten used to playing in that the faithful pack, and I think it looks really nice. Um. But yeah, it still looks nice in the faithful. What am I doing? How do I play this game? Resource packs, there we go. Faithful snap, done. Um <coughs> anytime. Thanks. Uh but yeah, that's you throw in hello, are we okay? You throw in stuff like the mossy stone bricks, uh and the crack stone bricks like back there. Um anything in that color palette usually looks okay. Where was... I wanted to try some stone also. I'll try it right here since somebody decided it would be a good idea to put four gravel beside each other. So... I think the goal here is to keep the same palette but give differences in detail. And color sometimes. Especially the, the mossy beside the grass looks looks good because you have that, you're pulling colors into this other block. Um, and this is probably not gonna, I don't have any more dirt. <sighs> Always something. But I think that's where we're gonna stop today. Hope you enjoyed the video. So signing off from the Kingcraft server. Until next time. Bye-bye. <gasps>